Hello crafty friends, it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I'm here with a card for the latest Lawn Fanatics challenge. It's a Lawn Fawn challenge and so I'll be using mostly Lawn Fawn products today. And the theme is summertime, so that made me think of the pirate set which I have colored up quite a few images from. When I first got the set, I stamped a bunch of images and colored them, so I thought it'd be fun to work with that again but I wanted to create a more clean and simple card so that I could produce a few of them. And I decided that one way to do that would be to make the sentiment a large focus on the card. And again, because I want to produce a few of them, there's going to be five in all. I thought it'd be better not to use pattern paper because I don't always have enough to make five cards. So I'm going to let this hugs maybe sentiment be a large feature on the card. I'm using the Lawn Fawn Quinn's ABCs to add the hugs part of the sentiment. I really enjoy the Lawn Fawn ABCs because they have the spacing around them. They're like rectangular shaped as opposed to being cut right on the letter. It makes them really, really easy to line up and it makes sure that the spacing between them is always even. So I'm going to line this up in my Misty because again, I'm going to make a couple of the cards so it'd be easier if it's in the Misty and then that way I can just stamp five in a row. I'm only going to show one card in the video just for the sake of time to keep it quick for you guys, but I will continuously just use the same design over and over to finish off the cards. I am using Simon Says Stamp Intense Black Ink because I will be Copic coloring these letters later on and I'm using a thick white cardstock for that same reason as well. I like the Recollections 110 pound cardstock from Michaels. I find that works well with Copic coloring and it's, um, thick four card bases as well. I was thinking about how I would lay all of this out. Uh, as some of you may know, I donate most of my cards. And so in this, uh, in the creation of this card, I was thinking about how it would be nice to make a card that was appropriate for boys or girls, work for all ages. And that's what kind of led me to the pirates theme and to the more clean and simple aspect of it. And if you are interested in donating cards, there is a card drive resources page on my blog that is linked in the video description. I wanted to keep it clean and simple, as I mentioned, so I'm rounding the corners at the bottom, but instead of just making a simple mask, I'm going to take the edge of my panel and put it all the way to the top of the card, which creates slightly different measurements. So the white card panel that the hugs is stamped on is three by three and a quarter, sorry, three and three quarters by five. The black panel underneath it that will provide a little bit of a border that isn't rounded is four by five and a quarter. And then the card is the standard A2, four and a quarter by five and a half card. I like being able to have a bunch of different pieces from the stamp set to work with. So like I needed just a little tiny something in the corner. So the coin, the pile of coins worked out perfectly. Or as I'm playing with the pirate, I'm thinking, do I want him to be with a treasure chest? I later on decide I want the palm tree. I feel like that was a little more summary to go with the theme of this blog challenge. And having a couple of colored things colored up made that easier. So I definitely recommend that if you have some time, you can kind of just sit down and color a bunch of things at one time and really have fun with that. And then when it comes time to making the card, you don't have to stop and be like, oh, I really wish I had some coins or, you know, little elements to fill things in. And so when I do stamp those out, I tend to stamp a few extra of the smaller accessories. Like there's a few more birds than there are pirates, or there's a few more coins than there are pirates. So those little accessories can fill out my card. I'm using a mix of multimedia mat and ATG to adhere these down just because I want to make sure they're nice and secure and both of those I find to be really strong adhesives. So now that I've created a little bit of a scene around them, it's not a whole scene because there's no like water or anything and you know, um, but just a little bit of a sort of visual triangle there with those three groupings. I am ready to move on to finishing off that sentiment. What I'm going to do is add a little ombre to it. Rather than coloring it solid, which you could definitely do, and I think that I had, I made it red to kind of pull in the red from his vest because there's really not a lot of red on the card, but adding it into another place, I think blue would have worked well as too to bring out the blue in his shirt, but the, the red is really bold. I'm going to use R17, R27, and R46, 
At first, those seem like, oh, well, those are really far apart. But if the numbers at the end are similar, they actually blend pretty well. So that's a good tip. If you don't have like R17 and 19, you could go with R17 and something else that ends in 7 or 6 or 5 or sorry, 6 or 8, something close in the ending number, and they tend to blend well too. So just a tip if you have a hard time, you know, mixing up or matching your Copic colors. And I'm going to color all of the letters the same way in that ombre. And that's it for my card today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you are interested in more crafting tutorials, be sure to subscribe to my channel. And I'm going to leave links to the products that I used in the video description below in case you want to check those out. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.